Good evening and welcome to INQ and A. Medyo nahuli kami ng uh, konti ngayon. The uh, Inquirer Question and Answer Program comes to you every Tuesday. Um, every week we feature a leading newsmaker to discuss issues of the day. And uh, today we have a, a very special guest indeed. I am John Neri, uh, Editor-in-Chief of Inquirer.net and with me is my co-host, uh, Christine Sabilio, Chief of Reporters. Um, Tyne? Good evening, John. Um, good evening to everyone watching us tonight. Today marks INQNA's first month with Radio Inquirer and Inquirer Television. Our guest for today is an iconic figure, someone who has been a key player in a, in a previous era of Philippine history. Our interview this, e this evening is very timely and relevant, especially with yesterday's opening of the formal peace talks between the Philippine government and the National Democratic Front. Um, before we start with the interview, we would like to share three things that we, you might not know about our guest. The first one is that um, he, I don't know if, John, you know this already, but um, he previously released an album of poetry and songs mm -hmm. titled Songs of Love and Struggle. Um, and yes, he sang in that album, uh, which were set to music by several artists. The second trivia is that he was President Duterte's professor at the Lyceum of the Philippines. And I think a lot of people knew this already, but can you guess what subject it was? Political science. Yeah, it's political science, but actually during my first interview with, um, with our guest, he said it was political thought. Um, the last one is that, and this is a giveaway, his nom de guerre was Amado Guerrero when he wrote the book Philippine Society and Revolution or Lipuna at Revolution Filipino, which has become a manifesto of the Philippine Revolutionary Movement. Our guest, ladies and gentlemen, is no other than Communist Party of the Philippines founder, Joma Sison, who is now in Oslo, Norway for the formal peace talks. Um, is he already online? Can we put him online? Yeah, can we queue? Um, the reason why we were actually delayed a bit was because of some technical difficulties. We were trying to get him on Skype. Um, we were already talking with him. Uh, so, as you know, INQNA has, we run from 8 to 9 p.m. Unfortunately, our guests could not join us for the full hour today because they are in the middle of the talks actually in Norway. Yes, right now it's uh, 8 18 p.m. in the Philippines. It's 2 18 p.m. in the afternoon uh, in Oslo. Um, the Royal Norwegian government is once again hosting the peace talks between the Philippine government and uh, the uh, National Democratic Front. Um, and our guest um, left uh, his uh, place of exile in uh, the Netherlands to join the rest of the NDF uh, peace panel in Oslo. Um, as Stein said, uh, we were already in touch with him uh, earlier, but uh, the connection is not uh, robust. So we're just trying to, uh, trying to fix that. Um, some of you, in fact, many of you, uh, we've had, uh, I think we have more than 50 questions already. Um, I don't think we can ask uh, all of these questions. We can ask only a few. Um, so I think right now, um, the um, morning sessions um, of the second day of the peace talks have ended. Uh, if we're not mistaken, they've just finished uh, um, their lunch. The morning lunch. session, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think they're having a break. Um, yes. Uh, so, you know, let's say they had lunch at 1 p.m. and so on. So on. Uh, th this was supposed to be the uh, a, a very good time to um, have the interview with uh, Jose Maria Season. Yeah, so we've been actually seeing a lot of videos and photos from Norway from the accounts of the government and the representatives of the NDF as well. And it seems that um, they're having a good time actually um, meeting um, members of the peace panels from both sides who are actually members of the peace panel from previous talks as well. So uh, that's one of the things that we would talk about later when we talk to Kajoma um, about what he thinks uh, is the prospect of the peace process now that it's finally ongoing again after being stalled for several years. So uh, what, what uh, excites, us uh, excites us about this uh, particular INQ&A is that um, <coughs> we are talking to uh, 
this uh, member of the peace panel who uh, um, is taking some time away from the peace panel uh, to to talk to us no? so right now they are uh, they are in that uh, hotel uh, um, in talk sponsored by the Royal Norwegian government uh, last December um, Tain was able to um, interview Kajoma in the Netherlands mm -hmm. you want yeah. to talk about that How actually um, uh, I if you remember we were in Paris to cover the climate change uh, negotiations and after that we went to the Netherlands um, to have a quick interview with um, the CPP founder. Uh, and a lot of the things that I will ask today would be a follow-up to the things that we discussed then. Um, at the time, uh, the elections were still a couple of months uh, off, and we asked him about what he thought about the mm. different presidential candidates, and one of them was President Duterte, who eventually but, but, uh, won. But wait, I think, uh, I, do we have the connection already? Or? Okay, uh, maybe we can, can start the can, interview finally. Can we have our uh, guest uh, yeah. online, please? Oh, there, finally. Uh, good evening, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Kajoma. Good evening, Paul yes. Good afternoon. Um, maraming salamat uh, for uh, taking time out uh, from the uh, peace uh, negotiations. If we can go straight to the uh, to our questions, I know uh, you don't have uh, all the time. Um, how was the uh, first day and a half of uh, the negotiations? Well, uh, it's normally the opening day. The open ceremony yesterday was very successful, and then we started the work what you might call the work meeting, uh, we we were able to finish three of the five items in the agenda that was set by the June 18 uh, statement. So we are running very well. Uh, but of course, uh, items four and five uh, concerning amnesty and uh, a mode of ceasefire uh, will be more uh, uh, complex, I suppose. Oh, I know. Uh, what, with, what we have just finished um, doing is uh, um, make agreement on uh, reaffirming uh, the existing agreements between the government of the Republic of the Philippines, or GRP, and uh, the National Democratic Front of the Philippines. And the second item that we were able to finish uh, was the um, submission of the reconstituted mm -hmm. list of uh, uh, document holders mm -hmm. who are entitled to the protection of uh, the joint agreement on safety and immunity guarantees. And a third uh, item um, concerns the uh, accelerated uh, plan in, in the peace negotiations. And um, uh, the panel-to-panel -panel decision was to let the um, reciprocal working committees on uh, <coughs> social and, and economic reforms and the working groups on political and constitutional reforms and the working groups uh, on end of hostilities mm -hmm. and disposition of forces to uh, hold a meeting this afternoon and um, uh, submit later the technical details of uh, uh, the uh, uh, scheduled plan uh, of work. Um, Kajoma, thank you. Jung's, uh, um Agreement on the uh, accelerated uh, timetable uh, sounds exciting. Um, nung uh, hindi ako nagkakamali, nung the last time uh, there were negotiations, I think about six, five, six years ago, there was also an attempt to have an 18-month timetable and so on. And but uh, very quickly it uh, ran aground. What makes this uh, particular agreement now uh, uh, more solid? Well, uh, I've always said that uh, 
President Duterte, in comparison to previous presidents, is more is more open, no, to uh, uh, really accelerating the peace negotiations. The previous ones were, were more interested in uh, the capitulation and uh, pacification of the revolutionary forces uh, under the guise of uh, protracted <coughs> ceasefire. That was the problem. Uh, now, uh, there seems to be a greater determination on the part of uh, uh, the Manila government to uh, make substantive agreements. Um, Kajoma, just going back to what you mentioned already. Um, so, you have already finalized the list of the JASIG protected consultants. Uh, has the government panel accepted it? And now, because I remember that was one of the reasons why the peace talks were stalled in the past. They had problems with the list. So, now we have a new list. It's final. Uh, yeah, indeed. Uh, previously, um, the other side before, uh, during the time of Aquino, um, uh, stood or uh, uh, took the position, rather, that uh, the JASIG was inoperative and therefore uh, it did not serve to protect uh, the, the uh, NDF personnel involved in the peace negotiations. But now, uh, there is now a reconstitution of the list of uh, those who are entitled to the protection of JASIG. And um, uh, this was what uh, the NDFP was asking from the so-called GPH side, not from the uh, side of the Manila government, but uh, then uh, uh, the uh, uh, negotiators of Aquino um, would not budge, would not, uh, they simply said JASIG was inoperative. And so that was a big obstacle to the peace negotiations. But now JASIG is considered as valid and operative, and uh, uh, the NDFP has just submitted uh, the reconstituted uh, list. And so uh, the, those involved in the peace negotiations on the side of the NDFP uh, enjoy the protection of JASI. Kajoma, um, yung sa um, accelerated timetable. Uh, I, I know, uh, in fact, you, you started off by saying uh, while you have some agreements uh, that the marami pang kailang uh, pag-usapan, um, gusto ko lang sa lang maintindihan talaga, um, how long will this process take? Uh, maybe I... Uh, pinagkasunduan. Pinagkasunduan na uh, uh, the uh, committees, reciprocal working committees, working uh, to draft the comprehensive agreement on respect, uh, on, or excuse me, on social and economic reforms, or CASER, uh, would finish, uh, would try to finish their drafting job within the next six months. So there's a definite uh, timeline. And then, um, uh, at the same time, the reciprocal working committees, um, the, the reciprocal working groups, rather, uh, on uh, political and constitutional reforms and on the end of hostilities would uh, uh, work at the same time. And um, one after the other, uh, the reciprocal working committees shall be formed accordingly and in order to finalize uh, what would be ready-made uh, draft agreements prepared by uh, uh, the reciprocal working groups. So six and uh, more or less six in within six months, you have the drops of uh, yeah. um, of all the of, agreements, of, uh, the comprehensive agreement on social and Sorry. economic reform, as well as preliminary drafts on political and constitutional reforms and uh, and uh, uh, comprehensive agreement on the end of hostilities. If uh, I can. Uh... Uh, try to understand that in, in simpler fashion, uh, Kajoma. Uh, when can we expect you back in the Philippines? <laughs> my, my going to the Philippines? Uh, yes. Uh, for a lot um, of people, that's a sign that uh, the peace agreement well, uh, is uh, progressing. The well. work is in Oslo. Uh, 
uh, the panels are supposed to meet uh, in Oslo either on their own account or in supervision of the working uh, bodies that are responsible for drafting the comprehensive uh, agreement. So, paspasang uh, trabaho. So, I suppose uh, I will be in Europe for the next six months to participate in, in the drafting work. So, um, there is no hurry. Um, and, uh, you know, I was supposed to go to the Philippines to attend uh, yeah. the premier showing of Tibak, no? yes. the story of Kabatang Makabayan, mm -hmm. and President Duterte and I supposed to attend no? mm -hmm. uh, the premier showing in order to receive uh, 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 Gawad Supremo. But uh, that has to be postponed. I, instead, I have sent uh, a video message. And I don't know if President Duterte will be able to attend, no? So uh, there was a definite target for my going to the Philippines, mm -hmm. but of course, I give priority to the peace negotiations in Oslo. Kajoma, how, is the, how are the peace panels now? Um, we've been seeing a lot of videos. It seems that um, the, the two sides, even if they're coming from the different parties, they get along. I, and I believe a lot of them have been involved the in the peace talks previously. Well. They're, very uh, they're laughing. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, how? Uh, uh, half of the time, I suppose. And they managed to uh, agree on the serious matter uh, between uh, ex exchanges of jokes, no? And uh, that's the atmosphere. Uh, when, so yeah. uh, anyway, there is uh, the spirit uh, pervading uh, to um, make the agreements according to the time uh, schedule. When would we? Uh, when is the next uh, formal round of talks, and what can we expect after the six months when the agreements are finally drafted or the full agreements are presented? I think the, the next meeting would be um, a meeting to draft, you know, to draft uh, the the comprehensive agreements, and uh, I, I suppose after this uh, meeting. In Oslo, there is going to uh, ha there is going to be another formal meeting uh, next month or early uh, uh, October. Uh, Kajoma, if you don't mind, uh, we'll talk about something uh, not directly related to the peace talks, uh, but may have an impact uh, on them. Um, I'm sure you've heard reports that uh, the Philippine military, that some of the rank and file are feeling a little restive, uh, especially with the release of uh, the Tiamzon couple. Um, how do you read? Well, you know, in any army, uh, the first uh, rule is to obey uh, all orders from the command. And so the commander in chief, the president of the Philippines, uh, President Duterte made the decision. Uh, uh, the, uh, the army, the military uh, has to follow. Uh, and uh, there has been no objection. And uh, uh, legal processes have been followed. While at the same time, the joint agreement on safety and immunity guarantees uh, has been invoked. Uh, <coughs> Uh, to justify the releases, because indeed uh, the uh, the consultants of the NDRP who, who have been in prison for quite some time mm -hmm. um, uh, have been arrested <coughs> and detained in violation of the JASI. So um, it's very important that the uh, GRP side, uh, the Manila government side, uh, accepts the validity of the JASI and. Uh, in accordance with JASIG, the releases have been made. Um, Kajoma, we have a question from Facebook. Uh, we've been getting questions from social media. Um, this is r not really directly connected to the peace talks, but I think a lot of the people, the young people who are involved uh, in the political discourse right now, especially online, um, they, didn't, uh, they didn't live through martial law, for example. 
um, they weren't able to uh, <coughs> to to see how the revolutionary movement um, prospered at the time. Uh, so this is a question from Jojo Castillo. He's asking, um, is the armed struggle still necessary? Well, uh, the armed struggle is necessary, has been necessary, because of uh, uh, what President Duterte himself has described as the corrupt character, the rottenness of the system. And, you know, uh, he is not far from the left uh, in... Uh, uh, saying that the oligarchs have oppressed and uh, exploited the people. And, of course, she recognizes the, that uh, the oligarchs are serv servile to a, a foreign power like the U.S. And uh, so uh, he, he himself uh, says that he is uh, the first left president. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, uh, that explains why he has a political will that uh, goes along with the political will of the NDFP in uh, uh, re resuming uh, the formal talks in the peace negotiations. He has, uh, it seems, that he is determined. And um, uh, so we, we can hope for um, better results and uh, then uh, previously, because the previous administrations were only interested in the capitulation and pacification of the revolutionary forces. Uh, President Duterte has uh, expressly uh, declared that uh, he is for, for justice and uh, he is against the oppression and exploitation suffered by the people. So um, along this line, the peace negotiations are being conducted. And so uh, the first uh, comprehensive the first comprehensive agreement uh, that will be worked out uh, in the time of President Duterte's uh, uh, concerns social and economic reforms to be followed by political and constitutional reforms. Kajama, um, the revolutionary movement was born uh, in a particular context, uh, and that context was uh, defined by uh, the presidency of Marcos. Um, I know that uh, you've already... Well, the, the most brutal form, the most brutal form of oppressive government was the fascist dictatorship of Marcos. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, instead of this fascist dictatorship succeeding in uh, suppressing the revolutionary movement, it stimulated it. No, it it uh, laid the ground. Uh, you know, Marcos. You, uh, we used to call Marcos as the chief um, uh, transport and supply officer, the chief recruiter of the New People's Army, because uh, of his uh, oppressive rule, extremely oppressive rule. Uh, the people uh, rose up, and uh, the New People's Army became strong. That but even mm -hmm. after Marcos. Even when the pseudo democratic regimes from Cory Aquino to Noinoy Aquino came, uh, really uh, there was only a masquerade that went on. No, uh, there was the facade of the uh, democracy, but in fact, uh, behind it, uh, you know, are uh, the uh, um, are the worms of a rotting system. Uh, there is a uh, continuous process of rotting and worsening of the crisis. And uh, uh, naturally, because the people suffer, continue to suffer exploitation and oppression, uh, the new people's army has managed to become uh, strong and uh, uh, a force to be reckoned with. Uh, there would be no peace negotiations in the first place. The new people's uh, government has become, uh, you know, uh, has no value whatsoever. Uh, uh, but, you yes, know, the uh, NPA thrives uh, among the people as an instrument uh, for justice um, against oppression and exploitation. So you have peace negotiations. In other words, the pseudo, the false democratic regimes that followed the outrightly brutal anti-democratic regime of Marcos were not really democratic. Uh, especially 
in the in very substantive terms no peasants continue to be exploited land uh, the land problem continues but it's, to it's be worse kajama and uh, was taken away from them mm-hmm. As, excuse me no I, so but it's the same uh, well, what you call a pseudo democratic uh, government that uh, elected or, or, or a system that elected uh, the president that uh, you are now conducting peace negotiations uh, with Uh, but you know this is a president that uh, uh, you know uh, you might call that beat the system too no he is a product of the system but he beat the system with uh, uh, much less money than the other wealthier candidates he was if, able if I... to win mm-hmm. by by you know by properly uh, adopting the campaign line uh, if, you if... know he has, mm-hmm. i'm not saying that this a sure fire a sure fire perfect president um, but uh, you know among the candidates he was the one who effectively attacked uh, the uh, the rotten aquino regime and uh, the candidate uh, Ma rojas uh, speaking and, of uh, and then he adopted uh, uh, the campaign methods mm-hmm. uh, he uh, uh, would characterize a mass movement and of course he availed of uh, the social media <laughs> Kajoma, um, speaking of rotten regimes, uh, you did classify the Marcos uh, regime as the worst. A- and yet, it is okay with you for Marcos to be buried at the Libingan ng mga bayani? Uh, uh, I said my, my bottom line is uh, Marcos should be buried in the, in the Batak because the re- real remains are already buried there beside the mother as he wished. Uh, mm-hmm. What is going to be brought to uh libingan ng mga traidor at mga bayani if you to be more precise about uh, libingan ng mga bayani no don't don't just say it's an exclusive cemetery for heroes no it includes a lot of uh, a lot of uh, non non heroes most likely you're going to have the walks there with a big uh, mausoleum to be built no uh, to sort of uh, you know make a monument no for the dictator Kajoma, um, you you mentioned a while ago that uh, President Duterte is not the perfect president. I remember when I interviewed you in the Netherlands, you said <coughs> at the time, I, I think Duterte wasn't leading in the surveys yet. Um, well, you you the two of you ha- had the long relationship. He was your student, and you said that you don't think he is the best president, but um, you you like that he has strength of character. But at the same time, he has a loose mouth. And the past few months were a bit of a roller coaster for the two of you. Um, you you were trading barbs for a while because of the unilateral ceasefire issue. So, and so, and the last statement I read from you is that you have reaffirmed your friendship. So, how is it? How is your dynamic? How is your relationship with the president um, with those kinds of controversial issues? Ah, uh, there was a miscommunication. I call it a <laughs> communication glitch. <laughs> and so our the friendship, uh, our um, friendship that grew out of our uh, uh, student-teacher uh, relationship uh, has been able to prevail over uh, the communications glitch uh, because, um, well, um, uh, we are, um, I would say that President Duterte has been concerned anyway Uh, about uh, uh, the public welfare, what's good for the people, and uh, uh, that is the uh, line that I also take. And so uh, we have come to uh, uh, continue pushing uh, the peace process forward. So uh, I've pointed out in uh, many instances that uh, Duterte is a mixed bag, uh, Uh, but he has shown in Davao City uh, that for some three decades he was able to cooperate with the, the revolutionary movement as well as the legal progressive forces. And so uh, he knows how to mix his policies. He tries to be inclusive. And uh, of course, as I said, he's not perfect. Uh, he is still born out of the system. And um, uh, what we have is the promise uh, to uh, uh, 
to fundamentally better than the previous presidents. Let us see. Uh, he's only 50 days in uh, his office, and um, uh, as far as the peace process is concerned, uh, mm -hmm. he uh, beats uh, the previous presidents, except probably Ramos, because Ramos, uh, in his time, uh, allowed uh, some 10 agreements to be made, including the framework agreement, uh, the Hague Joint Declaration in 1992, and... Uh, the comprehensive agreement on respect for human rights and international humanitarian law. We still have to see whether during the time of uh, Duterte, we can have a comprehensive agreement mm -hmm. on social and economic reforms. And uh, uh, we still have to see we can, uh, if we can go further than that and really uh, establish the ground for a just and lasting peace. Kajoma, um if I can go back to um, our earlier conversation about uh, Marcos uh, and about the rotten system, the uh, fraud, the pseudo uh, democracy that we're going through, uh, that we, uh, you say, uh, we are living in. Um, my question really has to do with the apprehension of people who support the peace process fully, uh, who yeah. still fear that it is precisely uh, statements like this by you that will undermine support for both the peace process and for the Duterte administration. Uh, statements like, uh, I'll give two examples. Uh, one, uh, that you know this is just uh, a pseudo-democracy. And two, that uh, maybe we should rename the libingan, libingan ng mga traidor at ng mga bayani. Uh, that is not a popular idea. Uh, I can tell you. Um, how do you respond to this? So, uh, just to recap, the apprehensions of people who support the peace agreement, who are happy that the first uh, day and a half of talks have gone off, uh, have gone so well, and then they hear statements like this, and then they wonder: Is just is this just uh, a continuation of the revolution by other means? Uh, do you know the revolutionary movement uh, is open to the possibility of achieving bourgeois democratic reforms? And what do, do I mean by bourgeois democratic uh, reforms? Uh, national independence and doing away with unequal treaties and arrangements. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, having uh, democracy by empowering the working people, uh, economic development through national industrialization and land reform. Um, expanded free education at all levels, uh, public, uh, pro, a patriotic and progressive culture and international solidarity, uh, uh, trade and diplomatic relations with all uh, countries. So uh, what is there that is not possible? Those are bourgeois democratic mm -hmm. reforms. Mm -hmm. uh, Duterte himself says he's a uh, a socialist, but uh, you, know, you know, in the Philippines, you cannot be socialist without first uh, accomplishing the bourgeois democratic reforms. As I have already stated, what is the content of the bourgeois democratic reforms? Uh, those are not impossible in a combination of um, uh, what you might call left and middle forces. That is not impossible. And even uh, when, when the left and um, uh, middle combined, maybe the right can even be split and give them a chance to, some of them um, can have a chance to participate in the uh, process of accomplishing what we have always called national democracy. Uh, you know, um, uh, it would be possible to even um, buy out the landlords at, uh, at a fair expropriation price and uh, they are paid with industrial bonds. They participate in industrialization. So those are bourgeois democratic uh, reforms adopted in other countries before, no? So um, now you have a president quite different from previous presidents. He says he's going to revolutionize the government. I haven't heard of any president saying that, no? And, Except uh, Marcos. Marcos uh, did know, proclaim a... 
Yes. Uh, except Marcos. Marcos did proclaim himself to be the uh, center of uh, to be the uh, architect of a revolution from the center. <laughs> Uh, but, he, uh, he, yeah, he also Marcos mm -hmm. was a uh, master of deception. Mm -hmm. He used a, he said his revolution is democracy, and he he is making revolution from the center and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. But uh, Marcos was an acquisitive man, even as a congressman. We come from the same region, mm -hmm. you know. I I know exactly how how he how he built a mansion in Batak, no. <laughs> he built his mansion by, you know, making money on uh, Chinese immigration and on the foreign exchange control, no? That's Marcos. And, um, uh, uh, and, uh, but, and of course, when he became president, uh, he accelerated the spending of war damage payments and got a big cut, no? So people are impressed with uh, big, uh, big public works projects, but Marcos um, <coughs> made unprecedented cuts, no? Uh, from from those projects, uh, that's uh, Marcos. And of course, uh, when he said he would make the country great again, it would be at the price of suppressing uh, the patriotic and progressive forces. That's mm -hmm. why there was immediately a clash between uh, his ambitions and his uh, attempt to put up uh, a dictatorship uh, uh, on one side and uh, the patriotic and progressive forces in in, in the country as well as the, the entire Filipino people. That's right. Kajoma, I'll go straight to the issue of drug killings. Um, I think this issue has divided the Filipino people. Some are um, welcoming uh, what has been happening with the drug campaign, with the anti-illegal drug campaign, while others are questioning the rising number of supposed extrajudicial killings. What is your stand on this? Well, uh, I go along with the progressive forces. They have a critical view of this, no? Um, because when the numbers are rising, and let us say um, um, you get a standard explanation that uh, they are resisting arrest, but then families say uh, that uh, these people are being hit uh, arbitrarily on the streets and in urban uh, poor areas, while uh, the big... Uh, drug lords um, uh, get better treatment uh, and uh, they don't kill they don't get killed that way uh, well that is something that uh, mr duterte has to answer uh, for and he should answer you i'm not uh, <laughs> i'm not uh, i'm not his spokesman no yeah. but of course uh, uh, <laughs> honestly speaking you asked me my, my opinion my opinion is uh, in the peace negotiations we try to resolve uh, um, uh, radically different ideas and uh, programs, no? And we try to seek common ground by invoking the interests of the Filipino people. Kajal, so, huh? uh, even, even in the peace process, you must recognize that uh, it exists because of the of uh, the armed conflict, no less. And you know. Uh, the 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 strongest kind of opposition uh, to any uh, government in the Philippines up to the time of Duterte is still the the armed revolution and uh, this uh, uh, this matter this the armed conflict can be uh, settled only if you address the roots and so on so uh, the revolutionary forces. Or with uh, with which I'm more associated more than anything else uh, uh, in the Philippines uh, um, uh, would stand its ground anywhere in any arena of uh, in any arena of debate and as well as uh, in the arena of uh, peace negotiations. Uh, peace negotiations is not a process of yielding to those in power. Remember that. Uh, the armed revolutionary. Uh, can you give us uh, an example, uh, Kajoma? So, for instance, in the sa usaping uh, political and constitutional reforms, can you give us an example of a, an issue that will be taken up in that particular uh, category that will be subject to uh, negotiation? Sa political uh, and constitutional. Uh, there are two constitutions. There are two governments in the Philippines right now. You. Uh, you must recognize that there are two uh, governments, the People's Democratic Government of Workers and Peasants and the Government of, uh, of uh, 
the, the big compradors and landlords, and despite the the talk of President Duterte against uh, against oligarchs, uh, so far he has not yet revolutionized really uh, the uh, the existing state. So uh, you know there is a lot of hard work ahead in trying to arrive at uh, possibly uh, something new. Uh, I think uh, when it comes to political and constitutional reforms. Uh, uh, they, there will uh, have to be a uh, an agreement. What's the working paper uh, for? Uh, is it the, the constitution of the uh, of the big compradors and landlords, or the constitution of the big of the of the workers and uh, peasants? Or uh, uh, there can be a, a third uh, mm -hmm. uh, working paper, but that, that remains to be seen because we haven't uh, uh, really begun the negotiations. How about this, uh, Mr. Dut Itself is is interested in uh, radically changing the constitution in favor of federalism and most likely a uh, uh, parliamentary system. That's right. So uh, things are in flux. Uh, uh, we for instance, Kajoma. So 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 for instance, uh, he does he wants to do away with the party list uh, innovation. Um, what are your views on on this? This particular you know, provision, the party the, list, uh, as a concession to uh, uh, supposedly uh, the marginalized, marginalized, uh, uh, it's a bourgeois expression mm -hmm. uh, to refer actually to the majority of oppressed people. When or, or when uh, uh, there are parties that stand for workers and peasants who don't have much say really within the system. Uh, so the party list is supposed to be an opening. Um, but, you know, you look at the Congress now, uh, there are so few of them. And uh, I don't know uh, how much better would be that Congress of big compradors and landlords' uh, um, agents, no? Uh, political agents of the, uh, of the oligarchy uh, would, uh, would look uh, if you remove the... Uh, the few, uh, the, mm -hmm. the few party list uh, progressives, no? And if you remove the party list progressives, you may not hear uh, anymore any any patriotic and progressive sound. At least you get some of that sound now. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have to see uh, what better system uh, the, the Duterte government is trying to offer by doing away with the party list. Uh, but anyway, I've heard this argument. The party list system is now being taken over by the dynasties. Mm -hmm. That's also a valid criticism. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there was concern on the part of uh, the progressive party list groups that uh, the dynasties might uh, uh, wipe them out. Uh, and it remains to be seen whether the progressives can, can maintain uh, their existence uh, over time. Um, last question. Um, one of my last questions, uh, actually my last question, Kajoma, uh, would be some of the people are asking us, what are your bottom lines in the negotiating table? What are your non-negotiables? What are the things that will make you leave the negotiating table? And um, related to that, maybe you could just um, uh, answer. Uh, you already mentioned the party list group. Some of the former party list representatives are with the cabinet um, of President Duterte right now. What do you think would make them leave eventually? Um, what would it's the same with the peace talks? Parang parallel lang to that. Um, what should make them uh, leave the administration if ever in the future? Uh, if, for instance, the uh, Duterte government is only interested in a prolonged ceasefire mm -hmm. so that it can forget all about the demand of the people for social, economic, and political reforms, then uh, <coughs> uh, the revolutionary movement has to consider whether uh, it's use, still useful to go on with the mm -hmm. peace process. And uh, as I have already told you, the reforms being demanded are really uh, uh, attainable if uh, uh, those negotiating uh, on both sides uh, have the interest of the people in mind. No? Uh, what is wrong about national independence and the doing away with um, 
uh, with unequal treaties and agreements? What is wrong with uh, um, with uh, giving more leeway to the workers and peasants to empower themselves? And uh, what is wrong with economic development through national industrialization and, and land reform? If those things uh, are clearly impossible in the peace negotiations, then there's no reason really uh, for pursuing it, no? Uh, peace negotiations is not a process of surrendering, it's just having peace uh, and um, uh, peace of, uh, the op of oppression and exploitation. That cannot be, because so long as oppression and exploitation continue, then uh, there is always fertile ground for armed uh, resistance by the people. Kajoma, uh, thank you very much for spending uh, more time than we thought we would have with you. Uh, it's already 9.01 p.m. here in Manila. Must be 3.01 p.m. in the afternoon in uh, Oslo. Uh, maraming salamat po. Um, we hope to have another uh, conversation with you. Salamat po sa inyo, sa lahat ng kababayan at inyong mga tagapakinig, ating tagapakinig, sa binigyan ninyong pagkakataon sa akin na magpaliwanag. Salamat po. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, we weren't able to uh, air uh, the commercials <laughs> earlier because we didn't want to lose the connection. Uh, we're going to go uh, say goodbye now. Uh, I actually need to process a lot of the things that uh, uh, were said uh, tonight. Uh, I have to uh, go to my uh, dictionary again and look up certain uh, words. Um, I think it's very interesting. Uh, again, uh, we thank uh, Joma Season for carving out some time uh, from the uh, hotel in Oslo where he is actually part of the peace panel of the National Democratic Front. So thank you everyone for watching on Facebook, on Radio Inquirer and Inquirer TV. Um, follow us again on social media, on Twitter, uh, to learn who our guest will be next week. Remember, INQ&A is every Tuesday, 8 p.m. All right. So this has been INQ&A. Good night.